<laughs> Question one says, a packaging machine in a factory involves a process where the periodic force is applied to a mass spring system. The periodic force has a triangular wave, as shown in figure 4.7. Okay, so we've got a triangular wave. Looks something like this. If I mark these points here. And so on, where this value is A, this value is minus A. And we've got a period here of tor. So this is 2 tor, this is 3 tor. Where this is obviously time. And this is my forcing function, f of t. <coughs> That's just re reproducing what's in the notes. And I've given you the Fourier series. We know that f of t has been given to you, and it's the sum. n equals 1 to infinity of b of n <coughs> sine omega n t. And the n is odd, only. And b of n is 8 a divided by pi squared n squared minus 1 to the power of n minus 1 divided by 2. So when n is 1, we've got 8a divided by pi squared times by minus 1. Obviously that's 1 minus 1, which is 0. Anything to the power of 0 we know is 1. So you've got 8a divided by pi squared. When n is 3, Okay, you've got 8a times by 9 pi squared. Okay, you've got 3 minus 1, which is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we have a minus 8a upon pi squared times by 9. Then obviously when n is 5, you've got 5 minus 1, which is 4. 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. Minus 1 squared is 1. So basically this, this term here will operate the, si the, um, the um, sign in front of here. Okay, sign meaning plus or minus. Okay. And this term will obviously increase, but well, this term will obviously increase as n goes up, okay? Um, but obviously that's the constant, but obviously it'll be plus and then minus and plus and minus and so on, which is what that minus 1, n minus 1 upon 2 term does. When n is odd, you get minus 1, so you get plus 1, minus 1, then plus 1, minus 1, and so on, as you go up with the odd terms. Um, And it says, find the steady state solutions for x of t, where x denotes the displacement of the mass against which the force is being applied. And so, we've got our equation of motion, looks like this, mxn double dot, for the nth term, plus kxn equals bn sine of omega n t. Yes? There's our forcing function. So there, there we go. And um, to solve this problem, in the steady state, we try the trial function x of n is going to be alpha cosine of omega n times by time plus beta sine of omega n times by time. <clears throat> so x dot of n this turns into minus alpha omega n uh, sine of omega n t plus beta omega n cosine of omega n t I shall zoom in a bit because it's quite small. So x double dots quite clearly 
and it's going to be minus omega n squared alpha cosine omega n t plus beta sine of omega n t. So we plug this into our equation up here, okay, we end up with m minus omega n squared alpha cosine omega n t plus beta sine omega n t plus k alpha cosine omega n t plus beta sine omega n t equals b of n sine omega n t. Now, as we did in the tutorial, we can simplify this down. Um, okay, because this term and this term are the same. Obviously, if we take that out, we end up with k minus m omega n squared. Okay, so obviously there's that there's that term times by the quantity k minus m omega n squared. And so we can divide both sides by this term, and we end up with alpha cosine omega n t plus beta sine omega n t equals b of n divided by k minus m omega n squared sine of omega n t. Now it's quite clear, based upon this, there's no cosine term on this sign, so alpha must equal zero. And beta must equal to bn divided by k minus m omega n squared. So quite clearly x of n up here, this term, must equal zero times by cosine omega nt plus our value for beta times by um, sine omega nt. So x of n is going to be b of n divided by k minus m omega n squared sine of omega nt. So our complete solution, x of t, is going to be the sum of all the x of n's. From n equals 1 to infinity, where n is odd, and we have b of n 
divided by k minus m omega n squared sine of omega n times by t. Okay. That, so that's, like I said, x of t is the sum of x of n t. Okay, this is actually what's going on. This is what's going on, and that's obviously written in long form. And so I've got the sum. Yeah, one n is odd. B of n, we know from the uh, question, is 8a over pi squared n squared minus 1 n minus 1 upon 2 times by sine omega n t divided by k minus m omega n squared. There's obviously 8a upon pi squared as a constant, so that can come out of the sum. We have 8a upon pi squared. The sum n is 1, n is odd, to infinity of minus 1, n minus 1 upon 2, sine omega nt upon n squared k minus m omega n squared. And there's our solution. So just to recap, we have our forcing function up here. Okay, that's given to you in the question, and I've given you what the Fourier series of that forcing function is. We know it's just uh, got sine terms in because it's an odd function. Okay, um, and uh, and this is our value for b of n when n is odd only. Okay. And so what we do, this is our b of n term, we say we give a trial function that matches our forcing function, okay? Uh, and the trial function is a sinusoid, okay? So we take this as our trial function. We differentiate it twice to get into x double dot, and then we can plug those two things, these two lines, into our equation of motion, which is just there, okay? Take those two lines, plug it into this equation, which is what we've done, m x double dot, which is this term, times by k times x, equals our forcing function. Now I've rearranged this equation in terms of uh, um, you know, this, this term here, which is common in both of those terms, so you end up with this as a coefficient. You can divide both sides by this equation to get this, which is this. And it's quite clear from this equation, because there's no cosine term out here, alpha must therefore be zero, and beta is this term here. And so x of n, we take our beta term, we plug it back up into this equation, Okay, alpha is zero, beta isn't zero. You take your x of n term, you get this. Okay, and obviously the sum of all the x of n terms is going to be our solution. So here over here I've got the sum of my x of n terms, which is in there, from n equals 1 to infinity when n is odd. And so here I've plugged in eight, um, uh, my value for b of n, which is given in the question, times by sine of omega n t upon km omega n squared. And obviously 8a upon pi squared is a constant, so that can come outside as a sum. n squared obviously stays inside, and so does this term, and so does this term. So we end up with 8a upon pi squared times by the sum from n equals 1 to infinity when n is odd, of minus 1, n minus 1 upon 2, sine omega n t upon n squared, k minus m omega n squared. <coughs>